Do your feet stink? These things happen. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Maybe you're not aware that you have a problem. Well, with your tripod feet, I mean. Though, if you're only using tripods indoors, this may not be the video for you. But if you find yourself using your tripod mostly outdoors, especially on rocky terrain, then you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. We're gonna take a close look and compare three types of tripod feet. And we're gonna find out which is best under what conditions and which one I recommend. So let's get to it. Now, if you're a real estate photographer or you primarily shoot indoors, then rubber feet are probably the best choice for you. Honestly, as a landscape photographer, I've used rubber feet for decades and I didn't know I had a problem. Until one day, I was shooting a natural bridge in eastern Kentucky. And while standing on a hillside, I was trying to balance my tripod foot on a rock and the others on wet ground, and I discovered that my feet stink. Of course, spike feet are a great option in a number of situations, but they're really not the best in rocky environments. Indeed, I've used these in the past, and I might have removed this rubber foot, I don't know, maybe once or twice. And spike feet, they come in sizes up to about five inches. But because I hike and backpack to many places, I find myself worried about falling and accidentally impaling myself. And well, a slip or fall on a hillside could result in a, in a nasty injury. I'd rather avoid that. So, especially with three or four inch spikes. So with that in mind, I just kind of conceded that I would stick with rubber feet until I discovered these. Now, there are many environments where one type of foot will prevail over the other. For example, you may not want to use the uh, spiked feet on wood floors in the family living room, even though they'll probably work pretty well if you just kind of jab them in there, although you might get some dirty looks from family members. Indeed, rubber feet are probably the best choice in this example. However, when photographing a forest setting where the ground is covered with falling leaves and and the ground has kind of gotten spongy and soft, spikes will likely win the day in that situation. On the other hand, on a rocky surface, especially when wet, there's nothing better than claws just digging in and grabbing the rock surface. One might think that spike feet would be fine, but they can just kind of slip and slide around on a, especially on rocky, smooth rocky surfaces. But claw feet, they have teeth, and there's just more surface area to make more contact with the rock surface. So what about sand? Now, claw, claw feet, they do kind of cup the sand and therefore there's more surface area, more contact. But usually sand itself is not the problem. It's the water moving over the sand that creates the problem. In my experience, it's really not the creeks and streams that pose a problem. It's shooting on the beach with the tide rushing over your tripod feet. Truly, this is where spikes win the day. And not just any spikes, but the longer the better. In this situation, jamming those spikes deep into the ground provides the best stability as the tide rushes in and out. If you've never used a tripod on the beach, as the tide moves in and out, the tripod tends to sink more and more into the ground gradually. And the longer the spikes, the better the performance. So long spikes tend to hold their position, at least hold their position longer in my experience. When shooting in moving water, the further you sink your tripod in the sand, the better. On a side note, I've used CDs in the past. On a sandy beach, these increase the surface area and help stabilize the tripod. It's just kind of like using snowshoes. But they're, not, they're just not the best option when you're wading in the tide. Now, back to the spikes. They also have an advantage in high winds, but only on soft ground where the spikes can really be pushed deep into the ground. However, for most people, and I for one, usually don't shoot in extremely windy conditions. On that note, it's important to keep in mind that most photographers have a niche, and therefore, it is possible that one type of tripod feet may be all you need for your style of photography. And if that's the case, I would put some non-permanent thread locker like blue Loctite, and I just put that on the threads and call it a day. And as I mentioned earlier, spikes like these that have the cap over them, well, you, you can have the spikes and the rubber feet so that's an option too. However, sometimes less is best and I find I don't wanna to have to fuss around with putting shoes on my, on my spikes or swapping out feet. Indeed, swapping out feet, it's often more difficult than one might think. In reality, you've been dragging this tripod through the mud and rivers and sandy beaches and now you're just gonna take those feet off and swap them out. That grime and gritty sand, it can make it difficult to remove the feet. You might even need a tool to get this done. Not to mention how difficult this is going to be if you've been using thread locker and now, yeah, well, they're really hard to get off. On that note, why use thread locker at all? Not all tripod feet are created equal. Some are simply better than others. You may have noticed that some have O-rings while others don't. O-rings tend to do a great job of keeping things like water and sand out of the inside leg of your tripod. 
And O-rings are great for many reasons, but I'll name a few. O-rings help keep the threads clean, and thus it makes it easier to remove the feet later on. Also, an O-ring can help with moisture from building up inside the tripod leg, which that can get nasty and quite smelly as time goes on. However, one of the main benefits of having an O-ring on your tripod feet is to keep the tripod feet in place. It just prevents them from working their way loose. After a two-mile hike in the woods, en route to your destination, no one wants to find out they've lost a foot. And now you no longer have a tripod, you have a bipod. Good luck finding that missing foot. Indeed, that's why I use blue Loctite on my feet. Truly swapping feet back and forth, simply not practical for most of us. So, if I were going to set it and forget it, which one would I use? It's kind of like I said in last week's video, what if there can be only one? And last week's video was about what lens I would choose if I could only have one. And I'll leave a link to that in the end in the video description. Anyway, what if there could be only one? Indeed, that's a good question, and that depends on one's unique situations and environment. But for me, shortly after I added a set of claw feet to my travel tripod, I bought another set and I put them on my larger Gitzo. Why? Well, at least for my type of photography, I can't see ever needing another type. Indeed, from the moment I started using these, I was absolutely wild by how effective they are. Not only on rocky terrain, but on soft ground wood platforms, creek beds, roads, and just about everywhere I, sh I shoot. However, they're very similar to spikes on the family floor, but not quite as bad. Nevertheless, a simple rug offers an easy solution to the problem. Compared to spikes, which tend to pierce the rug anyway and hit the floor, claws tend to disperse their weight on the rug because they have more surface contact because they have multiple teeth. In any case, it's not the occasional indoor use that grabs my attention. It's the versatility of the claws. I think these are the best choice in most environments and situations, especially for landscape photographers. And since I put these on my tripod, I've never looked back or had the need to swap them out with another type. When I first bought these, I thought it'd be nice to have some rubber feet that might just kind of go over the claws, but after using these for almost a year, covers would only be in the way and I would likely never use them. As I mentioned earlier, most photographers have a niche, and that may dictate the type of feet that one uses. Every person's situation, environment, and style is different. Indeed, if I were primarily shooting sunrises on the beach while waiting in the tide, I would probably own the longest spikes money could buy and never look back. But if you're looking for the best all-around and most versatile tripod feet money can buy, look no further. Indeed, these are simply the best tripod feet I've ever used. Don't hesitate to contact me with any questions you might have. Also, don't forget to watch my video if I could only have one lens. I'll add links to that in the end in the video description. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you somewhere out there on the trail.